Welcome to this video where you will learn how to select your own region. But first, let me explain why we need to address issues in rural regions. Issues like unequal economic development, aging and limited access to land affect all rural regions. If these are not addressed, it is harder to solve the problems. This is something we have seen in the past decades. Meanwhile, rural regions cannot fulfill their hidden potential. The strength, weaknesses and opportunities for rural regions should therefore be mapped. By this, I mean that you identify which issues are important for a region, how they relate to each other and what type of solutions could work to deal with them. If you succeed in this process, it will become clear what future strategies and concrete actions could work in the region of your interest. Although rural areas share several characteristics, they are all different. The knowledge you will obtain in this course isn't useful if you can't apply it to a specific context. Therefore, we ask you to select a specific rural region for this course. You will consistently apply the knowledge of each week to the same region. It is your task to think about how the things you will learn work out in your own region. This will provide you with more in-depth knowledge of the region of your interest. And we call this process zooming in. You will work on your own region for which you upload your findings. You will also be invited to review the work of other learners, compare the outcomes and think about the differences you find. In this way, you are also zooming out from your region. This leads to a broader comparable insight on rural development. So what is the size of the region that you can select? The ideal scale of the region largely depends on the local context, but it makes sense to look at areas between 100,000 and 2 million inhabitants. The structure of government and the way how civil society is organized can also play a role in selecting the region. The European NUTS 3 and NUTS 2 level seem, for example, suitable regions, as they are based on governmental levels. NUTS 3 level regions, which you can see in the example here, tend to have between 150,000 and 800,000 inhabitants. NUTS 2 level regions are a bit larger and tend to have between 800,000 and 3 million inhabitants. An advantage of choosing such a region like NUTS 3 or NUTS 2 is that you can find more information about it. For example, a lot of information about NUTS 3 and NUTS 2 regions can be obtained through Eurostat. In terms of finding a specifically rural region, it also depends on your context. What rural means may differ vastly between countries. It is not a problem to select a region which also has urban areas in it, but it is important that there are clearly rural elements within your region as well. Think of a serious amount of nature and farmland and a part of the region which mostly consists of villages and small towns. So let me show you an example of selecting a rural region. As I am personally from the Netherlands, I will give you a Dutch example. The Netherlands is, as you may know, a relatively urbanized country. As a result, most potential regions will also have urban elements. These are the NUTS 3 regions in the Netherlands. I am now looking for a region which is relatively rural and can be clearly defined as a region. And for that, the region I am going to select is Achterhoek. In the typology of Eurostat, this region is intermediate between urban and rural regions. And in the urbanized Dutch context, this means that it is relatively rural. Moreover, Achterhoek is a region with both governmental and also civil identity. Its municipalities cooperate to attract tourists and it even has, as you can see here, its own flag. Although none of these things are specific requirements for selection, also not for you when you make the selection, I think that it will help me to apply theoretical concepts to this practical region. So let me repeat, this is just an example. There can be all sorts of reasons for you to select your own region. 
The point of this course is that you will apply the knowledge you obtain to a re rural region which is relevant to you, so that you can use this knowledge in your daily life. Therefore, it is important that you can find information about the region, region you choose. This will help you during the tasks throughout the course. The contrasting with other regions will help you to also learn from other contexts and see the bigger picture of rural development. So, good luck and don't forget to have some fun during the process.